Hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with another video on spray foam insulation. I have a number of videos already out on the use of vapor barriers in closed cell and open cell foam, but today I'm specifically taking a stab at this pervasive little question that pops up on Facebook and uh, Instagram and you know wherever people are talking, comment sections on YouTube videos about whether or not it's a good idea to just add extra insurance with another piece of plastic vapor barrier with closed cell foam. And I think this one needs to really be put to bed once and for all, as is the flash and bat. But we're gonna do a flash and bat video, another third and final coup de grace on the flash and bat coming up. So I wanna dig something up here for all of you. In the United States and Canada, the document that you're looking at right now is the appendix. This A stands for appendix. Part 9 of the Building Code of Canada. Part 9 is the Small Housing Act, the Small Small Buildings Act. So all houses and then small commercial wood frame construction, right? Part 925. So here we have increased vapor diffusion and resistance. So the appendix is giving... Uh, explanations to the code officials and to people. And this is what I want you to see. Thermal insulation. Where low permeance foamed plastic is the sole thermal insulation in the building assembly, the inner surface of this element will be close to the interior temperature. In this case, no additional vapor barrier is needed to control condensation within the assembly. Boom. And this appendix here. 925.4 is a 1995. That's right, 1995. Right? That's ancient already. No internet, no iPhone, no streaming services yet. Yeah, that's right, 1995 they understood this. Now let's go and take a look at 2020 code. Hey, this is actually 2022. It's even better. Same thing. Section nine. This is in the body of the of the code now. The appendix is the back, and the way it was described to me is appendix is optional. The, the code officials don't have to use it to enforce, but they have to enforce with the body of the, of the code. But the appendix is there to help them interpret certain decisions. And when we were being asked with closed cell foam if it was a vapor barrier. Uh, we were getting conflicting answers because people were operating in 2005 and 2010. They were still operating off of the 1995 code where we were. Now, don't laugh. I mean, bureaucracy sometimes moves incredibly slow at modernizing. Now, I think every five years, the building code is updated, and usually within that five years, it's adopted fairly quickly. All right. Here is the 9.25 section. Now, why are my American friends paying attention to this? Why is Missouri paying attention to this? Because physics is physics. Warm, moisture-laden air trying to escape when it's cold outside is going through the same environmental conditions inside the house in uh, Missouri, Kansas, Wyoming, North South Dakota, Michigan, New York. I mean, your heating degree days and your temperature variance swing and how long you stay at those temperatures is going to be different than in Canada. We get extremely cold and stay there very long. Same with Minnesota, same with Montana, same with North Dakota, South Dakota. But the physics is all the same. So this can apply, even though this isn't enforced legally over you, and it's using some language that you don't understand because it's in metric, it's not an imperial. Uh, the physics are all the same. So. Vapor barrier materials, required barrier for vapor diffusion, right? One, thermally insulated wall ceiling floor assembly shall be constructed with a vapor barrier so as to provide barrier to diffusion of water vapor from interior wall spaces, floor spaces, attic and roof spaces, right? So talking about diffusion, and I've told you in other videos that air leakage is 98% of your water problems and only 2% is your diffusion, but this is talking about diffusion. So they're going to list here uh that it's going to need to ha uh, conform to the ASTM E96 desiccant uh dry cup and and standard test method for water vapor transmission of materials that's the dry cup right there desiccant dry cup method 
And it's gonna list all these things. But when we scroll down to item number eight, it says where foamed plastic insulation functions as the vapor barrier, it shall be sufficiently thick so as to meet the requirements of sentence one. So uh, sentence one is that it needs to conform to 60 nanograms. So uh, I did another video where I told you that it's not just two inches of foam is, is a vapor barrier, right? You can hit vapor permeance of 60 nanograms at an inch or a little bit more depending on substrates. So the spray foam closed cell is always rated on the substrate and then the given thickness. Now we can laboratory test it independently where we take a core sample, test out without any skins top and bottom. We can test out where exactly we hit the 60 nanograms and in that it's two inches. At two inches thick, they're below 60 nanograms for the whole entire two inches. The whole entire two inches is, has got the permeance not the skin, not some little thin piece of material at the top or at the bottom. So what does this mean? It means that when you're using closed cell foam, two pound foam, and let's just say for argument's sake that you're an inch and a half or two inches thick on your substrate, you are a vapor barrier, end of story. Canadian building code recognizes it. Now you're gonna build your thicknesses up one, two, three, four, five, you know, whatever amount of inches that you want to hit based on prescriptive requirements and white paper values and what you and the customer deem acceptable. But you are not needing to take out a secondary piece of polyethylene six thousandths of an inch thick and put it in front of the spray foam. So that means you can spray into your ceilings, your vaulted ceiling assemblies, and you don't have to go up and put poly up after it. That would defeat the whole entire purpose. Why use plastic with plastic foam? The plastic foam is doing everything and more that the thin little piece of film will do. And I actually believe that putting up the thin piece of plastic film potentially opens the door to trouble that you don't want to get into. Let's take a look at what that might be. So here we have an example of a botched up spray foam job. This is a DIY kit. Now, Imagine, if you will, that this was left in place, but a vapor barrier was installed where the drywall was. The problem you would have faced with is the air leakage that would have gotten around the vapor barrier, the poly vapor barrier through the lights and penetrations, would have allowed the same amount of air into the space that would have condensed, it would have touched things that were cold and weren't sprayed correctly. Those would have formed condensation, frost, water, but now it's trapped between the permeance of the spray foam and this plastic sheet. So you've bagged it on both sides. The water can get in, it can condense, it can conform, form a problem, but it can't get back out. If the vapor barrier is not installed, well, it's going to come out of the lights and come out of the seams and come out of the fittings interior-wise a whole lot easier, and you're going to know that you've got a problem and you're going to be able to deal with it. If it had been having bats inside here as supplementary, the bats would have soaked up the water and more damage would have been present. We're just going to take a look for the last little bit of this video here. We're wrapping it up. We're just going to take a look at some obvious failures with closed cell foam and why having a vapor barrier in place would have been even quicker disaster. Now, this is a this is a failure of the spray foam, 100%. Like how it was sprayed, the conditions it was sprayed in. There's a number of variables as to why exactly this happened. We're not here to discuss that. This is not supposed to happen. This is a 100% failure and it needs to be caught immediately. This wasn't necessarily a ticking time bomb that occurred two and three years after the fact. This happened fairly soon. But my point being, I just want to make a point. If you have got disbonding or you, let's just say the spray foam guy was very, very negligent and this was a incredibly shallow low spot where the foam necked down to next to nothing and it formed water. You're going to have air leakage in this area. You're going to have condensation building up. Now it's going to want to show to the inside. Condensation always shows to the warm side. You're not going to get 
condensation building up on the outside where it's cold, you build your condensation on the inside where it's condensing, where it's warm enough to turn it into vapor. If you have a poly vapor barrier across these studs, you're not going to see the water for quite some time. Now, it will eventually come out, but it's going to hide it. It's going to still allow the water to get through, through the air leakage of the gyp rock. When you put the gyp rock up, you punch it full of holes. The holes carries air leakage. Air leakage brings the water with it. Air leakage far outweighs your vapor diffusion issues. But now you are trapping the water between the closed cell spray foam here and the poly that you've put up uh, protecting the sheetrock. If you've got it cocked down at the bottom at the plate quite well, you could end up pooling the water uh, for quite some time and rotting these studs from the inside to the outside fairly quickly. Uh, not to mention if you had put bad insulation in here as some sort of bull crap supplementary way that I don't agree with at all, the bad insulation would have just sponged it up until it hit saturation point and had to let it go. This is a big no-no. So here again is an example of just poor installation somebody's having troubles if some of these fissures go straight down to the substrate or very close to the substrate they have the opportunity to get to where the foam is going to be cold enough to condense right so this grody foam this snotty foam that was sprayed here okay it's probably it doesn't aesthetically it look too appealing here, but it's probably going to functionally work. I don't know if this spot's going to be thin enough to create problems. I don't know if this goes all the way to the substrate or close to it, and there's going to be problems down deep inside here. There could be. If you go and put plastic across here, what are you doing? You're sealing in any problems that are going to get in here between the spray foam and the poly. So, I don't agree with having the plastic at all across the studs. Uh, likewise, this seam down here needs to be caulked. It wasn't. This was the state of the building when we got there. Uh, they've done some caulking on the edges, but not at the plate. So you need to secure this to be airtight as well. Closing this out in two minutes. Anybody that has stayed on for this point, this is a golden nugget. And all the people that checked out earlier in the video are going to miss one of the biggest points of why you don't put poly up with spray foam. Do you see this caulking on wood frame construction? Air comes through these seams. They need to have caulking spread into the seams. Every single one. If you go and put polyethylene across here, here's your spray foam. It's not to the face of the foam. The foam is not to the face of the stud, right? It's less depth. If you go and put plastic across here, like a drum head, and don't caulk these, air is going to come through them. And what's going to happen? The air is going to push laterally off to the sides. And now you've got cold air coming in that can form condensation when it meets warm air. And what happens? It's trapped between the plastic and the spray foam. So the seams of the doubles and the triples and around the window headers and the base plates, they can let from high elevation down to low, they can let air in. Air brings with it the water. It can form condensation where you haven't even had a thin spot in the spray foam. You haven't had a problem here, but you've got a problem with the air leakage in the seams. And now it's flowing off to the side and getting in. So there you go. That is a big no-no. No poly. Do your caulking, do your air sealing, and your spray foam is going to work with closed cell foam. So lay out a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Share, like, and subscribe. Share this with somebody that needs to see it. This information is valuable. Save somebody a lot of headache. Catch you on the next one.